I got excited when this one showed up in the mail. I kind of took a sneak peek already at what's inside of it. The quality on this, mwah. Let's take a look. I have been saying this for a while, but Radiotity makes some really good products. This is a nice high quality EVA case. It's a two-parter on the inside, but look at that. This, this is right here is where it gets exciting. Everything they've put some thought into. So instead of just sliding these out of the elastic holders, there's a little bit of Velcro down here to make it easier to get it out. We've seen these kinds of poles on center-loaded coil antennas, but they put the little caps on the ends to protect the threads. That's nice. Oh, look at that. The end of this is actually beveled over to make it easier to get it started when you're screwing it together. It just makes you want to take good care of it. This here is the coil itself. So it's designed to be weatherproof, so everything is inside of the, the coil there. I mean, wow, you could, you could hurt somebody with that if you wanted to. This piece here is... Only a little tiny bit smaller than the regular poles, but check this out. This right here, this is the adjusting mechanism for the coil. Slides up and down. It's got some markings on it so you can tell where it is you're starting and stopping and take some notes. I want to go three up. Three up is 20. I'm making a number up here. Five up is 30. And I'm actually going in the wrong direction too. It's just an example. Six up is 40, etc. So you kind of take some notes when you're out in the field. You can do some fine tuning real easy. You can kind of feel that. Listen to this. You can hear that it's clicking as it passes over each wire inside of the coil. And then we have our adapter, which is also our ground stake. And so it's got a nice cover over it so you don't stab yourself. Pretty sharp end, not too sharp, but sharp enough that I'd, I'd be careful with. SO239 connector, and then this screws into one of those vertical rods. But again, you could put a hurting on somebody with that. It has a whip antenna. This whip antenna is seven and a half foot long. But if you take a look at it, it's got the double crimp on there, so you're not gonna pull it out of the base. And they did the same thing that other good manufacturers do. The top section is as thick as they could make it. They didn't pull pieces off of the bottom to make it short. They pulled pieces off of the top to make it short. And seven and a half feet really isn't all that short, actually. Now, another one of the things that stands out about this is it comes with coax. There's the manual. It comes with coax, and it actually comes with an adapter to get you to BNC. So there's some coax there. I'm gonna say it's RG58, but there's no marking on it, and there's no indication on the website, but it is nice and flexible and easy to work with. And then the ground radial system, it's not one of those ribbon cable things, and they're actually using three millimeter banana plugs on there. I'm gonna get this thing set up, and then we're gonna get it on the air. That wasn't supposed to rhyme. Get the coax out of the ham shack. Nice. I guess I was going in the right direction earlier for tuning. Check this out. So the slider right here is all the way up. All the way up is gonna be the last possible tap on the coil inside up here. And that is going to get you onto like 17 meters or so. And then all the way down is gonna get you onto 60 meters. Let's get some ground radials plugged in. We have three radials for a set here and these are each five meters long. I'm gonna take this one here and I'm gonna to toss it that way. I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna to toss it that way. And you knew it was coming, this is number three. That way. That was a little disappointing. So at the bottom here, what you're doing is you're tapping the very bottom wire of the coil and then you use the entire coil going all the way up as part of your antenna. When you move this up to the top, you're bypassing all of the coil and tapping into just the top and you're getting maybe a quarter of a turn or a half a turn. I have to take it apart in order to tell you for sure, but you can take my word for it. it maybe a quarter of a turn and then straight out the antenna. So very little of the coil and all of the coil. And then of course in the middle is half the coil. We're gonna go somewhere on 20, which I'm gonna guess is somewhere there, but we'll find out. And she's all set up, that was pretty easy. I'm gonna get inside and see what band this is on right now. Like I said, I'm gonna guess I'm in 20, but we'll only find out when we get inside.
All right, this is the 40 meter band. SWR scan. It is not on 40. 30 meter band. SWR scan. It is not on 30 either. 20. Here signals already. All right, she's not on 20, and I don't really have a clear indication. Can we switch bands while we're doing this? Oh, no, we switched it. It did allow us to switch, but the screen didn't update. All right, 17 meters. Okay, there we go. That's two to one on 17 meters plus two dips, 18.064 and 18.041. All right, so your adjustable range is half. Remember I was telling you, as you go up, you're tapping less and less coils, which means less and less wire, shorter wire. It's gonna move you up in frequency. I'm gonna go up. There's markings here. Can you even focus on that? They look like they're, I don't know, half inch markings. I'm sure they're metric because this is not a imperial antenna. I'm gonna go up halfway between those two markings. We're gonna go and take a look. These things are what you call high Q. So a little tiny movement makes a big difference in where you end up on your SWR scan. On this radio, the SWR meter is right here. So we'll watch that while we're making this contact. All right, I just got it retuned for the 20 meter band. Check this out. Get you to zoom in there. Look at that manual zoom. We are pretty close to one to one all the way across. You can see the SWR meter right here, a little bit orange as it gets to the higher section, but never gets above 1.7 to one. Awesome. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, 5 watts. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Awesome. All right, I got you a 5 9 in Wisconsin, Whiskey Indigo. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, 5 9 Wisconsin, Kilo Mike 9 Golf. 73, good luck. Five watts, 20 meters, not bad at all. Let's try some more power, because I brought the amp out today. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Copy the 5.9, I'll give you a 5.9 Wisconsin in return. 5.9 Wisconsin, QSL. Excellent, I got it, thank you. Thank you very much. You are the Kilowatt Bravo 1 Whiskey. Well, that was a contest contact, but it counts. Just don't believe the signal report too much. Every time. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Copy the 5 9 Connecticut, Charlie Alpha Papa. I will give you 5 9 Wisconsin, Whiskey Indigo. Awesome. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. I didn't need the amp, but the amp doesn't hurt. I'm going to turn the amp off again, see if we can get him. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. All right, with the amp on. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Five nine. Copy the five nine Mike Alpha. I will give you five nine Wisconsin Whiskey Indigo. I'm sorry. What was the uh, state again? Wisconsin, Wisconsin Whiskey Indigo. Awesome. Didn't hear me at five, but he got me at hundred. Turn the amp back off again. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, 5 watts. Uh, Kilo Mike uh, 9 Golf, is that correct? Roger, Roger. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. You are 5 9 Whiskey India. Whiskey India. Thank you for Wisconsin. You're 5 9 New Hampshire. Charlie Hotel Echo. Copy the 5 9 New Hampshire. Charlie Hotel Echo. Thanks for the contact. Good luck. Thank you. You too. Uh, have fun this afternoon. WA1 YZN. 73 QRZ Whiskey 5 Triple R. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Oh, awesome. Think, uh, QSL? QSL, QSL, Kilo Mike 9 Golf, Wisconsin. You are 5 9 into Wisconsin. And for some weird reason, the uh, N3 SAP log uh, brings you up in Texas, but you're 5 9 into Houston. 
Yeah, I am a Texas resident. I'm just up in Wisconsin on a vacation here. Okay, well, enjoy your vacation. Uh, great signal and uh, 73 from Houston. Over. 73, thanks for the contact. It is a beautiful day to be outside, and I really enjoyed using this antenna, getting it set up. It was really easy. It is a very high-quality antenna. I like the travel case. I almost thought it was a clarinet when it showed up in the mail because it's about that size. You can see the quality when you, when you open the case up. You can see what's going on inside when you take a look at it. And then you pick it up and you put it together and you can feel that it's actually got some pretty good quality to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this thing out until the next rainstorm. Then I'm going to come back to you guys and give you a good eyeball look over what this antenna looks like after it's been out in the rain once or twice. So be sure you are subscribed to see that. There is a button right below the video that says subscribe for you. It's free and it'll make me happy and it'll get me closer to my goal of 100,000 subscribers subscribers this year. There are links in the description too, which is down below that subscribe button, where you can get this antenna with a good discount. And also the Zygu radio that I use, the X6100 and the XPA125 amp if you're interested in either one of those. Made some good contacts at 5 watts, made some good contacts at 100 watts. I was actually pretty impressed with the 5 watts. Usually I don't run 5 watts. Usually I'll carry along a battery and I'll hit 10 watts just for that little extra oomph. But 5 watts got it done. Let's go take a look at the tuning. So there weren't a whole lot of people to talk to on 17 meters, so I moved to 20. Let me show you where 20 is at my location. It's gonna be close for you, but just a little bit different. We've got that much left in tuning on the coil. And so I am one notch down below the first segment on the segmented band here, the first big segment. And it's gonna change a little bit depending on where you are, but that's where I am to get me down below two to one SWR. If you wanted to fine tune it even more, you can move the whip down or you can move the coil up and then move the whip back up all the way. Really coarse adjustments with the inductor tap, but you're gonna miss it every click on the induction coil. It's gonna be a pretty big jump. And then when you start moving the whip up and down, that's when you're gonna get the little tiny jumps to get you in real close tuning, real fine tuning. So coarse tuning on the coil and fine tuning on the whip. And I've got a video on that for you right over here. If you wanna see more, click on that. Otherwise, thanks for being awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.